Hey, it's Jay, and today we're gonna to start to build a native garden in this area. A few years ago, kind of regretfully had put stone down. You can see all the, the weeds that have grown up through it. And I built a little fire pit back here. It's fine, but we have used it twice, I think in four years. So I'm gonna turn this thing into a planter. Just really wanna make sure that we preserve this. This is a beautiful preserve behind me. Um, and the biodiversity is really amazing. The challenge is, is that when we go to Home Depot or Lowe's, just normal places like 90, 95% of the plants in there are invasive or non-native species. And we end up planting them to look beautiful around our house. And they do, they look beautiful. I mean, I have a ton of non-natives um, planted around my house. The truth is, is that when you get close to like this beautiful, pristine preserve, if any of those non-natives are invasive, meaning they're aggressive and they can grow and overtake native plants, then all of a sudden your forest just gets consumed by plants that are just not good. We're gonna try to do our part. We're gonna plant native plants to Florida and the Southeast. So today we're just gonna kinda do the initial setup. Let's do it. The reason I had this area originally was we had a terrible hurricane and I had three oaks, mature oaks, come down in my yard. And when I took them out and cut them up, it just opened up this area. And so we have this entire area back here that just is kind of bare because of the oaks. That was about four years ago. But this is the American beauty berry. You can see those berries developing in the fall. It'll turn like a bright purple. This is the sand live oak right here, just growing up right here. And then over here is another ty type of uh, oak. I think it's probably like a Chisos live oak or a water oak, I'm not sure what it is. Just the biodiversity that's here in this forest preserve area, wow. My goal was to repurpose all the materials I already had, so I cleaned up the silver travertine stones and made a cool path back to our yard clipping pile. Next, most of the stones were overgrown with shoots of St. Augustine grass from my lawn. So I raked the stones aside and used the extra stones to create a path back to the yard clippings. I used the remaining silver travertine to complete the path and then narrowed down the stone to make more room for the native flora. Now that most of the stone was out of the way, it was really easy to weed the grass. Sorry about the overexposure. I forgot to check the ISO on this shot.
Now for the fun part. It was so satisfying washing all the soil off the stones. The brownish black seeds you see on the ground mixed in with the stones are from the hickory tree in between the path and the mulch. Now it's time to plant some species to help the bees, the butterflies, and the hummingbirds. I just picked up some all-purpose garden soil to use in the hole. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a base and then I'll put a little bit over the top. And we're gonna be planting a crepe myrtle. Now crepe myrtles were brought to the United States from Asia 150 to 200 years ago. They are ornamental with beautiful flower blooms, but they are not invasive. Bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds can't stay away from them and have wholeheartedly embraced this beautiful non-native. In fact, the Arbor Day Foundation sent me crepe myrtles as my annual free plants two years ago. This particular plant is a black diamond crepe myrtle, which was first developed in Mississippi. I purchased two bags of garden soil and I placed the remaining soil in the repurposed planter. I know the mulch won't last long, but I use it to keep the moisture in the soil. New plants need a lot of water, and if I'm not able to water the plants with the hose too often, then the mulch will help them from drying out. Next to the hickory tree for some shade, we're planting an Encore Azalea, which is native to the United States. This particular hybrid series was developed in Louisiana and is nice because it blooms longer than the average Azalea. These flowers are great for pollinators and I'll definitely be planting more of these soon to attract several species of birds and butterflies. After dumping the remaining garden soil in the planter, I dug fairly shallow holes and planted the perennials. I then filled in the rest of the planter with mulch to once again hold in moisture. I had a couple more blue asters to plant and these natives will grow two to three feet tall and have a ground spread of two to four feet. They are really good for pollinators and have beautiful blue flowers. They like medium to dry soil so they should do really well here. I spread the remaining mulch around the area. The cool part is that all this open area is available for native flora growth. One last spray down on the stone and a really good drink of water for all the new plants. All right, this area is officially repurposed. We got a bunch of blue aster. We got the crepe myrtle. We got some more blue aster and some other perennials. We got the azalea. And created a little walkway back here to my compost pile. This is where like all my grass clippings go. I don't put food out here because it's wild out there and <laughs> I don't want to attract all sorts of animals, but we uh, definitely compost all the grass clippings and weeds from the yard. 
This is a bald cypress. Planted that. That was from the uh, Arbor Day Foundation. They sent that to me. And then here's another one. They're doing pretty well. They're about a year old. And then planted a crepe myrtle back here. I'm going to continue to plant and continue to add native species. There's a link that I'll put right here. It's super, super good for finding native species in your area. Uh, ones that are good for the birds, the bees, and the butterflies. And uh, bring back America back to its former glory. Until next time. Two days later. What the? He's trying to make that a home. What? Another armadillo? I don't know. Something. <laughs>